Mike, Mike, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you so much for uh, coming on our live stream. We really appreciate it. Yeah, this is weird. I'm like watching you on a video of like a couple second delay. And are you really? <laughs> mess with my head. So oh, I gotta, that's funny. Ahead. <laughs> the, my computer here. <laughs> well, hope you've been enjoying the stream so far. So, yeah, we're about 1600 on the Give Kids the World fundraiser page plus whatever we have in the um, Super Chat. Super Chat. Almost 200, I yeah. think. So, yeah, cool. it's it's awesome. So we didn't really know what number to pick when we set our goal for this uh, as it is our first time fundraising <laughs> for <laughs> this charity. So we just we were like, all right, let's go with 5,000. So honestly, anything that we fundraise, we're going to be proud of, but I, we'd love to hit our goal. Yeah. So. Totally. Keep it coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, for those of you who, uh, or for those who watching who might not be familiar, I'd love if you could uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Mike Graham, and that's no, that's um, so. <laughs> I uh, I discovered roller coasters as a young lad, um, and before that, I kind of discovered engineering, and I kind of put the two and two together, and uh, just the passion for mechanisms and the passion for. Uh, you know, the shapes that it creates to create the thrills just kind of really drove me into, um, <laughs> sorry, it sounded like drove me into a bad place. Um, <laughs> so, um, no, drove me into just the real passion for roller coasters. Um, and I started making roller coaster models uh, after my Lego phase because I realized that you can, you can make, you can make spinny rides with Lego but you can't really make roller coasters with Lego at the time. This Dude, was, I, I can know, relate to that. I was in the same boat. Like. <laughs> connects are where it's at, though. <laughs> you can't really say connects around me. You guys know that, right? No. Why? Let me backtrack a little bit. So the roller coaster model thing, um, I started making coaster models, and um, uh, that kind of propelled my, my interest you know, further in roller coasters. And so then I... Uh, this was be before connects before coaster dynamics. Like this is, I built these out of scratch and there's a couple other people that I knew, uh, out there making coaster models. And, um, we had nothing compared to what, what we have today. Um, so long story short, I ended up founding coaster dynamics with Jack Reimer. And so, um, it was uh, a lot of the R and D in my apartment, um, to create the whole coaster dynamics rolling train system. So, um, he came from a hobby background and I came from a coaster model background, put them together and boom, that's what happened. And so then, you know, years later now the coaster cutouts and nano coasters are all going crazy. I've, I've pretty much stepped away from the company as far as, you know, doing anything. I'm just kind of the biggest fan, but, um, dude, yeah, I, I have and, so uh, many coaster Dan dynamics. And, They're really and fun. <laughs> I'm literally looking, I look around like this, this room where we're doing this from, there are like eight models. <laughs> Of coaster dynamics <laughs> on these shelves. Ha ha ha! We have you in our grasp. Oh, you oh, dude! Absolutely. I have given you guys so much money. Like <laughs> all of the money. I love, I love coaster dynamics. It's awesome. Well, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. So Dan Linden, he's our main engineer, and then Matt, Matt Schmatzer, of course, from Pit, Print My Ride's been doing a ton of work for us as well. So, um, but yeah, Jack's Jack's uh, Jack's the one behind everything, and um, we have our facility down in Elkton, Virginia, and uh, it's pretty sweet just seeing the whole entire place filled with nano coasters and coaster cutouts and all the other models that we're making. And I don't know, it's it's uh, it's like, man, this is I wish I had this as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So where did uh, so so you mentioned that uh, you you're uh, doing models and everything. And I know that, that I've talked to, to you about this before and everything, but I'd love to hear how that kind of transition to where you uh, were working at a, a CCI. Yeah. So um, during college, I was building a roller coaster model, really big one. It was uh, 16 foot uh, by 10 foot by seven foot tall. And it was a, a fully uh, working aerodynamic style ride because that's, you know, who ruled the uh, rides back in the day. Um, ball bearings for the wheels, the whole, you know, the whole thing was operational. And uh, I actually had sold that to a uh, to Ontario Science Center in Toronto. And this was like right near the end of my college uh, days. Um, and then right after that, I got a, um, a uh, commissioned ride out in Colorado that I built. Uh, and it was a roller coaster model that hung from the ceiling. So that was a very unique challenge. Uh, so it was around that time I started putting my my resume out there um, and 
you know, custom coasters was top on the list. I had, um, I had written, um, uh, Raven, uh, after a whole bunch of people had prodded me to, you know, I had been to Cedar point, um, Kings Island and, um, Kennywood. Um, I'm trying to think what other parks I'd been to, but nothing really quite impressed me from the wood coaster point of view. Um, I grew up in Elyria, which is uh, real close to uh, Cedar Point. Uh, go Browns, Anthony, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> a friend of mine, John, he was like, you got to go ride Raven. So this this dates me. This is pre-Legend. This is pre-lots of other rides and obviously pre-Voyage. So I knew that you had to ride it at night. It was you know pretty evident there. So I remember it being my birthday. This is like late 90s. I was down there and uh, I just did a solo trip. And it was on my birthday and it was late at night. And I was like, okay, here's my first Raven ride. And if you think about the coaster landscape at the time, it's not like it was today. Yeah. You know, there's few and far between rides that are just exceptional. And so I get on the Raven, we're flying through these trees and it's a smooth, fast, crazy, awesome, out of control wooden coaster. And I get back in the station. And I was just like, you know what? I think think that steel coasters aren't all that anymore i think wood <laughs> coasters like could be way better than steel coasters i know who exactly i want to work for yeah and so uh, right right after that is when i was uh going through the modeling and stuff and so i you know sent my resume in to custom coasters um i was prepared that i probably wouldn't get a job uh just because that's what i've been told i'd been told that there's a better chance being an astronaut than a roller coaster designer and so I had a plan B. I was really you know, interested um, uh, in aerospace engineering and other mechanical engineering as well. But yeah, they had an opening. This was uh, in 1999. So they had the contract for actually eight rides for the year 2000. And they needed, uh, needed extra help. Uh, and they had an opening. And so they, I interviewed and uh, yeah, I got hired. It was a really crazy year. We ended up, um, there's the, the eighth ride that we opened seven rides that year. The eighth ride was at Astro World, uh, Six Flags Astro World, that um, got canceled. Oh. Um, but yeah, doing seven rides is is really stupid. Uh, it's just it's just not wise for any type of manufacturer of that size to try to do seven rides. That's a lot, um, particularly because they're all completely custom rides. All the structures completely uh, custom, and so it was really cool because I was, uh, you know, I was definitely an enthusiast. I had a, a website. Yeah, you know, this is like kind of on the front age of coast like online forums. So that you know, way before social media. Uh, but I had a website and I had all my model stuff on there, and I was kind of you know a little bit of a yeah, this is how I'm doing stuff. But I was also following um, the construction of Geauga Lake's transformation to Six Flags, Ooh. and so I had a bunch of construction shots because I uh, I went to school at the University of Akron. And I lived in Elyria, so I made that trip quite a bit. And so I was like, oh, I'll just take a side trip up to Geauga Lake. It's not exactly a side trip, but in coaster enthusiast world, yeah, it's like no, trip. no brainer. I was posting all this stuff online, uh, and my my buddy and I were out there one time, and we're like, wait, 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 wait. There's a construction trailer. We see all these footings in the ground. This construction trailer has custom coasters written on it, and we were just like floored. And so. We were so excited that, you know, this ride was going to be a custom coaster ride. Like he was the one that told me to go ride Raven. Yeah. And so we were, we were just thrilled. And so we, um, you know, just avid the excitement about that. And so but literally like a few weeks later, after I go to the construction site and post some photos, I'm hired at custom coasters. And one of the first rides I'm working on is the villain. And I'm just wow. like, oh, this is like total transformation switching gears so it was really cool um so that was custom coasters start uh and then i was involved a little bit with the rest of uh, those rides that opened that year um got my hands dirty doing some uh, gerslauer troubleshooting with uh, some of the gerslauer trains that year okay uh, and then the following year was um cornball express and cheetah uh, followed by uh, Lost Co- Coaster of Superstition Mountain. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and then uh, Cliffs New Mexico Rattler uh, was when uh, Custom Coasters went uh, went bankrupt or, or closed their doors, however you want to say it. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was at that point that uh, 
the other engineers and I were kind of looking at each other and we're like, well, we like what we do. And uh, we know the engineering side of things. Uh, you know, it was Custom Coasters was definitely a construction company uh, with an engineering uh, like division or engineering wing. And so uh, we're like, well, we don't know the rest of that stuff, but we'll just start. We'll just be consulting engineers. Um, and actually, um, when we were doing New Mexico Rattler, the ride was half done when the co- when the company closed. Yeah. And so the park was like what do we do when we're like they have all these <laughs> we got 30 guys on site let's just put them on our payroll and finish their hide <laughs> so, so so that's what they did and so you know we were um you know knowledgeable obviously about the the, the park and the ride and so we were able to kind of give them some uh, additional support to help get them get the ride open but that actually kind of created the model for us for some of those early rides at uh uh at the gravity group once we had been formed so it was actually the same team um, that we had been using at custom coasters. There's a couple different crews and, you know, um, but a lot of the same guys, you know, built all of our early rides and, you know, some of those guys are still with us today. Um, uh, a little bit, a little bit later when we started gravity craft in t- 2008, we actually brought everybody in house cause parks really wanted a little bit more of a turnkey, uh, operation. So that worked out well for us too. So we, you know, supplied the trains, we supplied the general contracting, we had our construction team we had the engineering we had the whole whole shebang so fast wow. forward to next summer gravity group is going to celebrate its 20th anniversary that is wow. so cool well congrats that is that, that is, is so wild exciting. that is ah i i have so much more i want to talk about i'm so sad we only have a couple minutes left what we have a donation uh someone uh here uh, wants to, yeah, yeah, we have a couple. So uh, we might have to go through these uh, uh, kind of quick. But one of them is uh, they want to know about uh, the Gravity Group prefabricated track because you guys just came out with that. Yes, engineered pre-cut track is awesome. Done. That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so engineered pre-cut track, uh, what we saw is we saw a need for uh, a new style wooden coaster track. If you take uh, layers of wood and you uh, have them like traditional layers of track, it's a certain strength and that certain strength uh, over time, you know, it's, it's held together with nails. So over time it, it kind of relaxes and fatigues and you start feeling that washboarding in the valleys, you know, two to five years after the new track, it's like, Hey, this doesn't feel that new anymore. And so if you take those boards and you set them vertically, all of a sudden your strength is multiplied by 30 times three zero. So what you have is you have an extremely strong track and that's going to stay strong over time, but that's not enough because we got to somehow get that shape in there. So we're actually using a CNC uh, equipment to carve essentially all these different pieces of Lego that we then stick together and create our track out of. So it's very economical because we're using the same boards, but we're using those boards uh, in a, a better, more efficient way. And so uh, shout out to everybody who's been on Racer this year. You'll uh, be a good testament of, uh, of that, that uh, feel. It still feels like a wood so coaster. Good. It yeah. just feels awesome. It was so, so good. That's our EPT, Engineered Pre-Cut Track. Yeah. Well, that is, that is awesome. Yeah. And then uh, our, our last uh, uh, question that we have here is um, uh, someone would like some uh, advice. Uh, what would you give for a mechanical engineering uh, major college student who wants to get into the industry? What would you recommend for them? I was thinking about this earlier today, actually, because like, what are we looking for? What are we, what are we looking for? We're looking for somebody that fits into a small business. We're a small business. We have um, uh, basically about uh, 16 to 18 people full-time at our facility. Uh, about uh, the majority of those are in the office. Um, and you know, somebody who is very well-rounded, you know, you might be writing a, writing a ride description, you know, whipping out your literary prowess one day, one part of the day, and you might be, you know, analyzing structure or, you know, finishing off a proposal in no limits or doing a drawing or, you know, you name it, there's, you know, we're, we're bouncing around every day is very different. And so, um, but what we're looking for is we're, we're looking for somebody who, who has the passion and, and can go the extra mile. And usually we're looking for, and this is, I think, generally speaking for resumes or things like that, we're looking for somebody who is kind of something special, something different about them. Um, I think in my case, custom coasters, you know, like that I was making roller coaster models. So they knew I could build stuff. I, they knew I was a practically minded person. 
you know, if somebody's involved with you know, either college groups, like either theme park groups or vehicle groups or things like that, those are all really good things. Uh, obviously, the more experience you have, the better as well. Uh, just not necessarily work experience, but just other experiences, hobbies. Uh, we look at everything. That's good to know. Well, That's hey, great advice, yeah, that, that is really good advice. We have a, we have a lot of uh, uh, we have a wide variety of people that that watch this channel. I know there's a lot of uh, students that that hope to get into this industry. So I think I think it's engineers. really cool that you know uh, we're talking to someone who you know just start off as like a, a roller coaster fan like the rest of us and then uh, managed to to work their way up to now where you know you're building some of the coolest rides out there and I think that is incredible. So Mike, thank you so much for coming on this stream. We really appreciate it. Uh, we wish we could talk longer. Unfortunately, we got a couple more guests to, to get through, but we really appreciate it. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, well, Mike. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. I know that uh, we'll be out to Ohio again, uh, probably, probably next summer or something. So we'll be sure to uh, hit you up. That sounds great. Cool. Thank you so much, Mike. We'll talk to you later.